form affinity. Where the dying takes form. Hey guys, welcome to another form affinity video. In today's video, I'm going over a little more in depth with LuxCore Render Engine. So walking you through installation and uh, a little overview or intro into uh, the engine itself and some of the textures or materials. Just a quick note, I am doing this on Blender version 2.91 beta. So uh, it should work on 290 to 80 versions and um, we'll see if it works on 291 as well. I believe it will. Okay, so going to luxcorerender.org, um, I'm just going to go to the download page. And what you want to grab is Blend LuxCore version 2.4. There's also another one down here, as well as um, this guy here. But what I grabbed is just uh, this one. And if you're interested, there's also a, a wiki that gives installation instructions. But I'm just going to go ahead and walk you through what I uh, did to get it working. So back in Blender. Um, so when you download it, you will get a, a zip like this. Um, so I just have that on my desktop. In Blender, I'm going to go to Preferences. And I'm just going to hit on Add-ons here and then Install. And then just go directly to that zip. Blend LuxCore version 2.4 Install Add-on. And then <clears throat> you just wait a moment and you'll see modules have been installed. And then just activate it here. You can pop this uh, little arrow down to get um, a link to documentation, uh, your version number, uh, location, etc. And then you have your preferences here if you want to run OpenCL or CUDA. Um, there's a link to the forums, the Discord, various releases, etc. So this is a good little um, uh, in info panel within the add-on section here for LuxCore. All right, let's get started by creating a simple scene. I'm going to move uh, our default cube up one and just uh, move it over. I'm going to create a simple uh, plane and just scale it up. And let's add just a sphere for good measure. Move it up to the ground floor there and set it to smooth. Just move it over. Okay, so to go into LuxCore uh, Engine, we have to switch from Cycles. And once you have the add-on installed, it'll show up here under this drop-down. So we'll just hit LuxCore. And you'll see these are all of your render engine options. So I'm going to just go ahead and do a quick test. So this is what it looks like right out the gate. Um, you've got various uh, sampling, um, your denoiser. You'll you'll see it, it actually did a denoise here, but this denoiser is for your render setting here, um, or if you're on you know. Uh, vanilla uh, vanilla blender it would be here so the denoise for the viewport render is actually down here so you can see if I uncheck it there and then the viewport also has um, your halt time so it just runs it by seconds it usually stops at nine nine from ten seconds so we can bump that up to you know, say 20 if we want, and then it'll run for 20 seconds. You've got color management in there. So you've got, you know, your view transform, filmic, filmic log, raw, false color, etc. Your exposure, your gamma, 
um, up here in light paths are your um, total bounces for your total path depth and then your diffuse glossy specular etc you've got light tracing and whatnot we won't go super in depth with this stuff on this intro video but just know that you have all these settings here um, also uh, important to note you've got your CPU versus GPU setting right there so if you prefer to run on your graphics card you can do that there I'm gonna leave it on CPU for now okay so you'll probably notice uh, in our background we've got um, even though our floor only extends to here we've got sort of this haze going on and a, like a sky gradient and that's because Lux LuxCore automatically puts in this uh, sky model so under the the world properties tab you have your options for changing the background uh, you've got sky HDRI flat color and none so sky's got a tint for instance um, we could change you know if we want a sort of a Mars look give it a, an orange look um, exposure we could bump up to say one you can set your sun to be an actual light in the scene uh, this guy here is actual actually the haze uh, amount of dust fog particles etc in the air so if we were to bump that up to say like 15 you can see it spreads the light out completely differently than what it was set at the other cool option here is you can change your ground albedo um, or use ground color which would just use um, a different setting so if we were going for that Mars or like a Blade Runner look we could change that there so there's a lot of cool options within just that sky um, uh, option there okay so moving on next you you would have HDRI um, and of course you're gonna have to select an HDRI image here there's flat color so flat color would be similar to just your normal uh, background color how it would be in a blender and then there's none if you don't want any influence and you just want your lights uh, that would be that guy there so if we are using flat color um, and we select let's delete this light uh, you see it had no effect there I'm gonna go in create a light point just move that up and then go into uh, your light options here and you'll see you can use cycle settings uh, if that's what you're familiar with and that's what you want to use but it'll default to a lux cores uh, light properties so you've got the color you've got the unit so artistic power lumen and candela um, I'm going to bump up the exposure on this one let's try something like six or seven okay I'm gonna bump up the radius a little bit you also have options to to run an image in there and IES lights so I'm gonna go over to flat color and turn this down So we've got LuxCore properties in the Render tab, the World tab, and that Light tab. Um, but then there's also, if you click on the camera and go over to the Camera tab, you also have options down here, down under the Image Pipeline. 
you got you know you can select your graphics card whatnot tone mapper um, all this stuff uh, and then it also has this cool uh, basically in-app or in plugin uh, post-processing little presets so if I were to turn on bloom and see bloom works um, vignetting etc so you can get pretty nice um, sort of what would be a considered post-processing effects uh, right out of the render engine okay so let's try applying some materials to this because uh, Luxcore actually has some pretty awesome materials if I go over to Hypershade um, find my objects here there we go so this has your your standard uh, shader on it I'm just gonna get rid of all that and create a Disney I'm gonna change the color let's add some metallic Um, and then for a sphere, let's just try glossy, give it kind of a blue look. And then for the ground, we'll just go with a mat. Lower the value a little bit there. Okay. So that's what, uh, Sort of your material uh, options for Luxcar are contained there in the Hypershade. Um, you've got all these presets. But let's say I wanted to change this guy to something like glass or car paint or cloth or velvet. Velvet would be cool. Um, so there's more contained within there, you know, outside of what's listed here. Okay, so opening up something a little more complex with uh, some more objects and materials. Um, you guys have probably seen this model. Uh, it's, uh, the Space Dozer, it's basically seen probably every single version of the Maya config. But um, I essentially use this as like... Uh, a never-ending model just to test out my config features so let's jump into I'm gonna grab one of the surfaces here and jump over to hypershade and you can see my nodes I've already uh, built out um, so for for this I'm using a, a car paint material um, glass material, Disney material, uh, what else do we got? Metal material. Reselect that guy and we will take a look at this node. Um, so I have my car paint material. I'm running a constant color into the diffuse in the specular. Uh, specular 1 and then specular 2 I'm running triplanar mapping dots and 2d mapping and that's all going into your material output and so for like metal I'm just using a metal material with a Fresnel right there and changing the roughness and opacity. Glass is pretty straightforward. You just got your transmission color and reflective color and your incidence of refraction there or index of refraction. Let's see what I have on the floor. I think just standard glossy material. So let's go ahead and set this up for a render. Um, see where my camera is. Active camera is there. So I want to touch.
tuck in a little bit to that. Um, let's set our camera to here. And then to, to move back, you notice my camera is staying in, in place. If I click on our new lock camera to view button, I can lock it and then move out here. Okay, and now let's do a render. Okay, so there's my rendered scene. Um, I let that guy run for about 10 minutes, as you can see at the top there. And um, that is on a fairly old machine, my computer. And I haven't taken advantage of uh, speeding up the render engine. Also important to note, denoiser wasn't turned on. So there is still a bit of noise in there. Um, but I kind of like having a little bit of noise in my renders anyways. If this was a actual print ready render, I would probably, you know, double the time, maybe even triple the time. I'll let, let it just render for a while. Um, if you open up hit N on the properties panel and go down to LuxCore, you've got all of your settings. This is also where you pause or resume the render. You got st uh, statistics, um, compare, you have scopes here. Which, I don't know how you actually activate that. Um, there's your slots. So some cool stuff to take advantage of there. And yeah, um, I just like the, the look of this engine. It gives a, a little bit more of a um, kind of a natural look, I feel like. So let me know what you guys think of this video and of LuxCore Render Engine. Um, if you've got plans to use it, um, if you have any questions, etc. Also, if you do end up using it and if you really like it, um, if you're interested in supporting the engine, they have a donate, donate page there under About. So I'm sure they would love to have uh, support. I think it's a really good engine. Um, as you can see, uh, Blender 2.91 beta didn't come out that long ago, and it's, it's already working uh, pretty seamlessly. Um, so they're keeping up to date uh, with all the Blender builds so far, and um, they're also producing videos on their YouTube page. So I think this engine and this community is uh, pretty active. So anyways, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys in the next video. Take care.